All right, our next presenter uh, for track number two is uh, Nick Stark. Nick Stark's a security researcher and pen tester uh, here in the Des Moines area, right? Uh, he works on the, uh, the Lyft security team, uh, likes developing exploits, and uh, likes blowing up things. Uh, he's going to be talking about USB Gallagher today. So I'll turn it over to Nick. All right, everyone. I'm Nick Stark. This is USB Gallagher, or the presentation you give when you don't have any real research to present on. So um, just a show of hands real quick, who knows who Leo Gallagher was, the comedian? OK. So for anyone who doesn't know who he is, we're going to just show this little video real quick so that you can familiarize yourself with Leo Gallagher's comic shtick. Oops. Uh, I guess there's no. I did, but you know, it's okay. You don't need to hear it. Basically, what he does is, is he gets all of these watermelons at the end of his uh, uh, show, and he smashes them with a big mallet. Like for it's, he was known for doing this for like decades, and <laughs> there's no real reason behind it. It was just his thing. You know, it was his trademark signature fi finishing move. So um, this is Leo Gallagher. He inspired this talk. Who am I? Okay, I'm Nicholas Stark. Just a little bit about me real quick. I'm a penetration tester at Lyft Security. We're based out of Washington State. You ever need web application assessment? Come talk to me or come talk to Lyft. We'd love to talk to you about it. Um, I'm also the uh, vulnerability advisory coordinator at uh, the Node Security Project. That's uh, nodesecurity.io. Um, I'm also a security researcher in my spare time. I do, that, I do it a lot um, just for fun, for, you know, breaking stuff. Um, and I'm also uh, a minor Twitter celebrity with like 250 followers. So uh, yeah, if you want to follow me, make it 251, it'd be great. So USB kill, what is USB kill? USB kill is a uh, thumb drive like device. In fact, let me just show you what it looks well, You can see what it looks like. But what it does is it charges capacitors on USB power and then discharges that power um, on the USB data lines. So it charges like 200 volts of power into these capacitors and then discharges them on the data lines multiple times per second, like uh, I think 8 to 12 times a second. Um, it comes with this nice little card. Like when you order it from Taiwan it, it, or Hong Kong, it comes with this little card. And I'd like to read this card to you. It says, important, read before use. The USB killer is a high voltage testing device. Misuse may damage electronic equipment including the USB killer itself. After testing, disconnect the USB killer immediately. Permanent damage can occur to the USB killer if left connected for over 30 seconds. When using a testing shield, never short the test leads continuously. Permanent damage can occur if the leads are connected for over 30 seconds. So there's actually this test shield that you can plug the USB killer into and then plug the test shield into a device and it protects the, test, uh, the device from the USB killer. But at the same time, you have to be discharging that electrical current using these two little uh, wires, and it actually creates a spark, you know, like a visible spark that you could uh, supposedly light a cigarette off of. If, if Andy's here, maybe not. Maybe, oh, he's pretty, the guy uh, doing the other presentation told me that story last night. So here are the technical specifications. Uh, the input, and I'm not an electrical engineer, so I don't really know what this means other than you plug it into something and it destroys it. But uh, <laughs> input voltage, 4.5 to 5.5 BDC. Output voltage for the version 3 is 215 volt, volts. Um, that, uh, that was 200 in the version 2. So there's, there's, there's actually like three versions of the USB killer, and um, we're going to be looking at the version 3 today, I think. Uh, so it's also CE and FCC approved, meaning it meets certain compliance minimums that they can actually stamp those, um, stamp those credentials onto the device and uh, supposedly it's safer, right? So allowing you to test in complete safety. So the end result of plugging this device into another device is that the device you plug it into doesn't work anymore. Like, it, the, the, by discharging the, data, the power over the data lines, it'll fry the motherboard, the hard drive motherboard, sound cards, video cards, 
and just generally make the laptop unusable or, or other electronic device. It can, anything with a USB port in it. Uh, there's really no documentation on what devices are vulnerable to this attack. There's a wiki uh, on GitHub that the manufacturer manages, but it's all community driven and there's only like, you know, maybe 10 or 15 devices on there. So um, if you want to take a look at it, or if, you, if, you wanna, if you're interested in actually buying one of these, it's a great little thing to, you know, upload if, um, if you actually do some testing and you find out your device is vulnerable. So you can also make these at home using a couple of uh, different techniques. Like you can take an electric bug swatter and create a USB killer out of that. However, the homemade ones tend to end up like this video that I'm about to show you. And we're going to try to avoid that today. So Leo Gallagher had his mallet that he smashed watermelons with. I've got my fire extinguisher just in case we have any accidents. But we're going we're gonna to avoid that today because we're using a device that's tested and complete, that's supposed to be completely safe to test against. So, and the, the other consideration we're going to take when we test this at the end of the presentation is that we're going to test only against things that have DC current via a battery. So we're not going to test anything that's actually plugged into the wall. In this video, this guy's testing a desktop computer that's actually plugged into the, you know, his, his main breaker, and uh, that's alternating current, and that's, that's where you get things that catch on fire. So we're, gonna, we're not going to even plug anything into the wall today when we start testing this. So the pricing on this is uh, in euros. Uh, $54 for this anonymous version over here, which looks like any other thumb drive you might see anywhere in your office that you would just, you know, may maybe someone in your office would plug in to their computer to see what was on after they found it in the parking lot. So uh, that's uh, about $60, the standard edition, which looks like this, uh, is uh, about 53 and then shipping seven bucks. So like $70, you can get this little device that uh, someone will definitely plug in if they find it laying around and uh, it'll destroy something, probably something expensive. Uh, so I'm going to post these slides later. I wanted to post some uh, links that you can use to build your own one of these if you're that adventurous. Um, like I said, you can build them out of like uh, bug zappers and uh, other miscellaneous things you can get off Amazon. You can build one of these, one of these $60, $70 devices for about $25, $30 in parts. But at the same time, you're building something that will probably shock you and probably catch whatever you plug it into on fire. So... Um, it might be worth the extra money to, if you don't want that, if you don't want to catch it on fire, to spend it on buying a CEFCC approved device from Hong Kong. So I'd like to talk a little bit about the use cases for this device. So the marketing on usbkill.com, which is where you would buy this off the internet, uh, claims this to be a tool for penetration testers. And so I asked myself the question, what legitimate use cases exist within penetration testing for this device? And um, if you have any, at any point that you think of, just shout it out, because uh, I don't really know of any valid uses for this device. Um, the only one that I've been able to really think of is like if you're a spy somewhere and you're in a really bad spot and you have to destroy a computer for some reason, um, but I would imagine those guys have their own tools that they're built in house that are probably smaller and better and more effective than this. But like yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So thank you for shouting out a valid use case. There we go. To end this presentation. <laughs> <laughs> so it might be interesting to take a look at some of the newer uh, hotel locks to see if they fell into a safe condition or a secure condition. Yeah, so that's a good point. Um, and along those lines, the um, the newest MacBook Pros supposedly have some sort of anti-capacitor device installed in the USB uh, ports that don't allow the USB killer to discharge over the data lines. And supposedly it's not vulnerable to this attack, right? But um, you'd have to be more adventurous than I to plug it, uh, one of these into like a $2,000 laptop. Like I just, 
I have seen a video where they did try that out. It didn't kill a laptop, but it did kill that USB port. So it wasn't effective for charging or data transfer. The other ports, I believe, were fine, and the laptop itself is fine. So not 100%. But a little bit, right? But a little bit, yes. Yeah. Better than just completely destroying the whole thing. But still, that's, I mean, if you plug it into every USB port, right? Yeah. And you can't plug any more USB devices in. Right, of course. Yeah. <laughs> no more adapters. <laughs> no more adapters. Yeah. Um, okay, so I've got two slides that kind of go over some of the legal ramifications that might apply to um, using this in a particular scenario. But I am not a lawyer, and if you have any questions about this, uh, ask a lawyer. Uh, ask, go with consult an attorney and uh, ask your questions to them. So I found this in the Iowa Code. Um, I'd like to read this really quick without any commentary. Criminal mischief is criminal mischief in the first degree at the cost of replacing, repairing, or restoring the property so damaged, defaced, altered, or destroyed is more than $10,000 or if such acts are intended to do or in fact cause a substantial interruption or impairment of service rendered to the public by a gas, electric, steam, or waterworks corporation, telephone or telegraph corporation, common carrier, or public utility operated by a municipality. Cr criminal mischief in the first degree is a class C felony. Um, it's also worth noting there are criminal mischief in the second and third degrees, which are class D and E felonies. So federal law has this big block um, about destruction of government property. I won't read the whole thing, but I will point out at the end it says, if the damage exceeds $100, the defendant is subject to a fine of $250,000 or 10 years in imprisonment, or both. Um, I can't really make any legal recommendations, but I will, I'll go ahead and say it. Don't plug this into a government computer. I mean, you're just going to get yourself in trouble. So how is this tool different than other hacking tools? Like, how is this different than Metasploit? Well, I, I think the underlying theme here is that Metasploit won't destroy property to the point where you can't use it again. Metasploit won't render your USB drive or your USB port uh, completely unusable if you plug it, if you run it on a USB port. So I'd like to ask a couple of fundamental questions about this device. Is this a tool? Uh, without many use cases, is this still a tool? And I got the definition of a tool out of Merriam-Webster. A tool is a thing used in occupation or pursuit. Is this a toy? An object, especially a gadget or machine, regarded as providing amusement for an adult. <laughs> that might be a little closer. I mean. We're, we're going to have some fun with this later. We're, gonna, we're going to get some entertainment out of this when, when we light up some of these devices. But in my opinion, this classifies more as a weapon. This is a device that's specifically designed to do and inflict physical damage. Um, maybe not necessarily bodily damage or bodily harm, uh, you know, any sort of um, injury to a, a person, but it's definitely designed to inflict physical damage on property. And uh, that's why I think this is more of a weapon than a tool. And um, if anyone has, again, valid use cases to use this as a tool, I'd love to hear it. Just shout it out at any point. Just, if you come up, even if it's the craziest thing, like you've got to disable an alien nuclear reactor, you know, just shout it out, because I'd love to hear how this could be validly used in a penetration test or any other scenario. Anything? Ethan? No, okay. What about like, uh, like uh, surge protection? <laughs>
the one of the questions that a friend asked me when I was preparing this conversation or this um, presentation is: Does Second Amendment protections extend to USB killer? If this is a weapon, do my right to bear arms extend to, to this device? Do, do I need a permit to get something like this, or or maintain something like this, or or carry it in my pocket? Um, Skynet. What? Skynet. Skynet. There we go. That's that's a valid use case, everyone. Thank you. Okay. So that, that's what the, the marketing site says, and that's, that's a valid use case. Like Cable Labs, I guess. Cable Labs, the, the group that tests the DOCSIS compatibility with cable modems. So your cable modem has a USB port on it, and you want to you test your cable modem against this device, uh, against this uh, electrostatic device attack. Plug it in. And then you don't ever have to do it again, right? You know instantly if it's going to be vulnerable or not. Um, so I, 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 I like that use case. But I think that if you're, if you're in that specialized of a circumstance, you're going to build your own tool. You don't need a mass marketed tool that um, anyone, any 13 year old can buy off the internet. All right. So I'm going to preface this with I have never plugged this into anything before because I don't have devices just laying around that I can destroy. So. This should be fun for all of us. <laughs> um, sure, yeah. Yes, correct. The, the question was, <coughs> is this going to discharge uh, on the data lines and, uh, and go through the data bus of the motherboard or the USB controller? Yes. Correct. Correct. And I don't know why it does that because I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm not a hardware engineer either. But um, I, I assume. That the, the 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 voltage is not used to getting that much voltage. It's used to getting. So the dis the actual the actual discharge is measured in amps. Then right, okay. The current that's being sent over the data lines. Okay. Do you, do you think this would work at all on like a battery pack? Or do you think those are just you run into power lines? I think I don't think I don't think there's data lines on a battery pack. Um, I've thought about this, about like what could happen. I think you would have to have some sort of data connection to cause a problem. At the same time, I've got a battery pack here, and we're not going to be plugging it into it today because I don't, I don't know what will happen, and I don't want to find out because it seems kind of dangerous. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's turn some of these on and plug some stuff into it and see what happens. I'm going to switch over here to my document camera. So you guys can see all the fun and games as we do this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? Yes. I'll just throw it up in the air and you can shoot it that way. That sound. Okay. We are ready to make history. This is a Samsung Galaxy Tab 3. And I've got a little dongle attached to it that allows me to plug this device into it. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> now, can I turn it back on? So 
So I wonder if I, I wonder if this cable got fried and not the actual device. Let's try it one more time. Uh, the Galaxy Samsung, uh, the Samsung Galaxy 3. Okay, so maybe this cable doesn't work. That was kind of anticlimactic, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's not going to do anything. I wouldn't hold it, dude. You don't think so? <laughs> <laughs> also, yeah, 200 amps is not too good. Okay, then let's just do it on the table here. Or no one's doing With $70, I'll get you for a Yeah, yeah, there we go. So, all right. So maybe that's not a, maybe it doesn't work. Or, you still want that didn't go through the test. Yeah, I'm going to kill it. Nope. Oh, there you go. I heard that. That way, yeah. That's right. So Okay, so back to slides. I got one more slide, and that is questions, I believe. So I got 20 slides out of this thing. It's not bad. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Any concerns? <laughs> yeah, is, is Brandon safe? Did you have a question? Oh, sorry. Okay. Well, I, I was expecting to spend more time on frying things, but... I'm a little scared to do that, so. You can actually go outside the building. You want to? Yeah. All right, let's do that. Yeah. All right. Good. Yeah, this one's smoking too. <laughs> <laughs> the screen's still on. Yeah, it is. Charge up more if you leave it in, Nick. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll, it'll keep sending current through it, so. Yeah. Yeah, one second's like eight, eight to 12, you know, pulses, so. That one's gone. I can't, 
should try the Blackberry because it's not the like the Apple laptops are the first to start using fuses. Okay. Like I have a lot of desktops at home. Okay, this thing isn't this thing isn't working. That's all I got. I mean I've only got you want to try this one? I can't take the battery out of this one though. You think that'll be okay? This guy brought a laptop. This guy brought a laptop. Yeah, go for it. That's how you charge it, I think. I, I'm pretty sure it does USB OTG. Tablet, I guess, is it vulnerable? What'd you say? It's immune. <laughs> immune, yeah. So does anyone have a 2016 MacBook Pro they wanna? It doesn't get that Thank you very much for holding the uh, fire signature. Cool. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. 